day. So for more on the commercial space sector more broadly, Jared Isaacman, the billionaire founder and CEO of payment processor Shift4 Payments, joins us now. He is the benefactor and commander of the first all-civilian Inspiration4 mission to orbit via SpaceX, which is set to launch as soon as September. Jared, great to have you back. Great to be back. Thanks for having me. So we have a lot to get to, including the fact that you have been doing training with SpaceX this week. Um, but first, just given the fact that space from an investor standpoint it is so in, in focus right now, uh, I wonder how you see this inflection point for this commercially driven era of human space flight more broadly. How crucial you think it is for all of these companies, whether it is Virgin Galactic, whether it is Blue Origin, whether it is SpaceX, which is really the leader in the sector and is the one that you're working with right now to succeed. And I say that not just from a safety perspective, which is obviously paramount, but also from a financial one. Yeah, so we're, we're certainly at an interesting time in commercial space exploration. I think this is like the great, you know, the second great, you know, space age uh, underway right now. And every mission that gets launched, whether it's suborbital, uh, in the case of like Blue Origin or Virgin Galactic or orbital in the case of, you know, SpaceX is a pretty special one. You know, that said, and, and obviously I, I root for the home team here, very hard to uh, bet against uh, Elon or SpaceX right now. I mean, you know, if you look at just the reusable rocket technology that they've been, you know, perfecting over the last, you know, six, seven years has been a key driver in making space more affordable and therefore more accessible, whether that's for crude or, you know, human spaceflight missions or simply creating, you know, massive constellations of satellites to bring you know, broadband connectivity to some of the, you know, hardest reaches um, and farthest reached places of the earth. So um, pretty impressive what they're doing at SpaceX, but exciting to see everything as a whole in the, in the um, commercial space industry. As potential space tourists um, decide where they might book their flights, um, given all the developments among these different companies, uh, I, I wonder how and why you decided to go with SpaceX and sort of skip the suborbital piece of the puzzle altogether and just go straight to a multi-day trip uh, around the earth. Yeah. So the opening disclaimer is, um, um, disclaimer is, I'm really obviously a big SpaceX fanboy here. So uh, I have, I think what they like, I think it's one of the most well-run companies in the world. What they do on a daily basis is extraordinary. And I think you have to appreciate just the huge, you know, technological leap there is from suborbital spaceflight to orbital. Uh, you know, suborbital spaceflight, you're putting something up and it absolutely will come down very, very quickly. Versus you put something up in orbital space, it's going to stay there for a very, very long time until you bring it back. SpaceX has been doing that for a really long time and, you know, efficiently reusing their boosters, which again is critical to making space more affordable and accessible for everyone. To me, there's, there's no contest. The only reason human spaceflight exists in the United States right now uh, since the space shuttle was retired is because of SpaceX and, and the contributions from NASA. You're, I would imagine you have some unique insights in the sense that you are, uh, you know, working to go to space right now with SpaceX, but also you are the billionaire founder and CEO of a tech company that went public less than a year ago right now and know what it is to adjust to quarterly reports and, and deal with public market investors. Um, how do you see space companies like, for example, Virgin Galactic navigating that and what investors need to understand about the sector? Uh, that's a really excellent question, right? And as uh, you know, the CEO of a public company, I mean, we talk about our TAM a lot. You know, what is the total addressable market? You know, um, what is our opportunity, our, our and our points of difference in the market? And I'd say that you know, those that are focusing on suborbital spaceflight have a challenge ahead of them, right? I mean, how many you know one-time suborbital spaceflight experiences, whether it's two hundred fifty thousand or five hundred thousand, can you do? Uh, and even if you kind of perfect suborbital point to point transportation, you know, going to New York, you know, to Australia in like 20 minutes or something like that on a rocket, it's very expensive. I don't know if that'll ever really be affordable to that extent Versus you look at orbital um, that has a lot of utility. Right. I mean, not just, you know, human spaceflight exploration like what, you know, SpaceX is doing with NASA or Inspiration4, but also payload, you know, putting uh, cargo on the space station, putting satellite constellations up that have real commercial intent. So I think like, the, you know, the TAM and therefore the opportunity associated with some of the, mm. you know, uh, players that are focusing on, focusing on orbital spaceflight, SpaceX, Rocket Labs, totally different than those that are focusing on suborbital, which I, I think is a little harder. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.